Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to Jamie TV. Before we go any further, please consider hitting the like button for me and subscribing because it really helps out my channel. Also, the details of my Patreon account are down below, which may be of interest to you. And if you'd like to make a one-off donation to help out the channel, my paypal.me details are down there as well. Uh, oh, and my website, my website is down there as well. So lots of things down there, check out down there. Anyway, um, today is a continuation of a, a series of videos I've been making recording an experimental instrumental track in Cubasis 3. If you prefer to watch the series from the beginning, unless you already are doing, perhaps you are doing, but if you're not and you prefer to go back to episode one, I will put a card up above with the details of the uh, playlist with all the videos in so you can watch it all in sequence. I know that's what I'd like to do. Anyway, get on with it. Right, so, okay, so we've reached a point now where we've got a fairly finished sounding track. There's quite a lot on it. Uh, but what I feel it's crying out for right now is some banjo. So I'm going to get my banjo set up and uh, let's make some noise. <laughs> Just tell you briefly how I'm recording the banjo today. You'll see that it does have its own pickup on it. It's just a real low quality one, and I do have a lead plugged into that, but it's just going to my giant size tuner over there, just so that between takes I can just have a little tuning check. Um, what I'm actually using is I've got an SM57 down here, just about an inch away from the bottom edge of the of the of the banjo skin. Right there, it seems to pick up a really kind of, uh, maybe not the fullest body kind of a sound, but a really middly sound that punches. Because I'm gonna, what I'm looking for from this microphone sound is I'm looking for that sound that's gonna bite through. And then I'm using the NT1 a couple of feet away from myself and positioned just here. I seem to be getting a nice, rounded, warm room sound. And I've done this before actually, blending these two sounds really helps me get the banjo to sit into a track um, sounding warm and full enough but also having the bite. So hopefully the combination of these two things plugged into the back of the eye track dock, which is sadly no longer made, um, will come up with a decent sound. <laughs> doing a very good job as an endo C if I didn't tell you at least a little bit about this banjo while I'm making this video but it's a job I'm very very happy to do because it really is quite a stunning quality what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link below the video where you can look this banjo up online and you can look at all the features and check out what the price is and when you see that price you'll probably think eh, it's probably a bit cheap tack but that's simply not the case the days are gone when you have to shell out a fortune to get a great instrument. That's That really is a thing of the past now. If you can get past the name on the headstock, you can save yourself an awful lot of money and still get a great instrument. This thing is put together stunningly well. Every component part of this banjo is brilliantly well thought out, well designed and absolute quality. It sounds absolutely magic and I'm, to be honest, I did wonder when I ordered it, you know, am I going to regret this? But I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with it, I wouldn't part with it. <laughs> Yeah. 
You may have noticed, of course, that this is in fact a six string banjo. If I just bring the headstock into view there, and it's tuned exactly like a six string guitar. Now, you might be asking yourself, you might not, you might not care, uh, but if you've seen any of my videos, um, you may well have realized that I'm a bit of a, a fan of things with strings. I like to collect and learn to play different things with strings. And so you might wonder, well, why would Jamie want a six string banjo? Why not get a traditional five string banjo and learn how to play that? Surely that would be of more interest. And yes, it would in a way if I had an unlimited amount of time at my disposal. But um, unlike mandolin, for instance, you know, like when I thought about getting a mandolin, I had a look at how it was played. I sort of learned a bit about it. And I thought, you know what? Pretty quickly, I could learn how to play mandolin properly. I could become a mandolin player. But when I studied banjo a little bit, you know, I had a look into it, how it's played, the proper technique and how the tuning works and everything. And I just thought, you know, it's going to take a lot of time to learn how to play that properly. And I absolutely admire anyone who can play the traditional banjo properly. Uh, it's something that's really quite fascinating to me. So for me, this works brilliantly because all the scales and chord patterns and everything that I already know on guitar, I can apply to this instrument right away. So if I'm working on a track, right, and I think, right, this track really needs some banjo, I can add a flavor of banjo without the pain of having to learn to play banjo first. So maybe it's kind of a, a clever shortcut, and maybe it's a cheat. I don't know, you decide. see some post about a six string banjo online there'll always be some cretin who has to comment on it you know mm, it's not a real banjo it's a guitar it's got six strings well who cares really you know to me this thing is actually constructed far more like a banjo than it is a guitar um almost everything about it it is a banjo the only difference is the fact that it has the six strings like a guitar. Otherwise, it is entirely a banjo and it sounds like a banjo. So what does it matter really, you know? For me, I mean, does it sound good? You know, I think it sounds good. So surely that should be all that matters. I mean, as musicians, we're supposed to be open-minded. We're supposed to be creative types, you know? We don't shut his mind off to something just because it doesn't follow some kind of tradition. I mean, how is tradition of any value when it comes to creativity? Think about it. It's not, is it? It just isn't. So, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it it's like this, right? It's like, um, it's like when somebody in a bass forum, right? puts a picture of a five string bass or even better a six string bass and there'll always be some knobhead who has to go like eh, it's not a bass guitar it's a guitar a bass has four strings it's a guitar it's got too many strings how is it a guitar it's tuned an octave lower it sounds nothing like a guitar all it is is an extended instrument that offers some possibilities that may or may not be useful to the player, right? So if it might be useful to you, buy one. And if it probably won't be useful to you, then stick with your four string bass. I mean, God, what's wrong with people? <laughs> You may have noticed 
just a distinct lack of mobile recording tips during this video. And that's just because in the last instalment, I gave quite a few Cubasis 3 recording tips that were appropriate to the real audio recording I was doing in that particular video. In this video, I've been following pretty much the same process, just with a different instrument. So I thought I'd crack on, get the banjo down, because um, in the next video, I'm going to be getting into the um, audio editing, the mixing, bringing in some third party apps. So in that video, there will be a lot of Cubasis 3 tips. So look out for that. What I'm going to do is just before I wrap up, I'm going to give one, uh, one tip, which I believe is appropriate to this particular video. Now, one of the problems with mobile recording is that you can very quickly consume a lot of memory um, when you're recording real audio stuff in particular. And in Cubasis 2, it wasn't quite so easy to delete those files off. It was possible, but it's much, much easier now in, in Cubasis 3. So I'll just show you how you do that. It's very, very simple. If you go to media, down here at the bottom of the list, um, the, the list that pops up in the left hand side is the trash folder. And in here, we have all the um, audio takes that I've gone for that weren't good enough, so I've deleted them. Now, I don't need any of those files at all, so I may as well just get rid of them and save some memory. But let's just say if I had um, accidentally recorded, uh, accidentally deleted something that I wanted to keep, everything is, is labeled. Um, you've got the title of the track and then the uh, name of the, um, of the, the name of the of the instrument, whatever you've labeled the instrument as, and then the number of the take, the date and time when it was uh, when it was recorded. So let's say if this recording here was something that I wanted to rescue, I just put my finger on it and drag it and I would drop it back into the project. Okay, so let's just empty that folder. Bottom right hand side, empty and permanently delete OK. And that's just saved me a whole load of iPad memory. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've really had a lot of fun playing that six string banjo. It's just such a enjoyable thing to play. And, and really that's what music should be about at the end of the day, I'm sure. If you didn't already, please hit like and subscribe and ding my bell. And if you have a spare couple of minutes, please do check out my Patreon. And if you'd like to help the channel with a one-off donation, my paypal.me details are down below. In the next video, I'll be getting into the mixing and editing and getting this getting this track finished off. I'm pretty sure that will be the final episode for this series. So please stay tuned for that. Take care of yourselves, behave. Goodbye.